Oh, what's on the telly? Bit of sumo. Go on then, sumo. Tell us all about your new festival. Firstly, guys, welcome to the camp in those babies. Um, now, I've purchased this festival tracksaw. Oh, there you go. All right, sumo, stop oh, showing man. off, mate. We know you've got a festival oh, tracksaw. Oh, I can't watch this glow inside yeah, anymore. Yeah. Just because they're winning the ashes. Oh, I'm going to have a cup of tea and a mince pie. Mm. Right, I'm going to put something decent on the tape. Uh, uh, that's better. Go on, Fielding! Go on, Peacock! Smash him! Smash the Aussie scum! Get him! Mason, you dirty git! The Lazy Susan table really does come in handy. Helps you reach your snacks, your brews, your knickknacks, your remote, everything you need at your fingertips. Let's head over to the workshop and I'll show you just how I built it. I've dug out a load of reclaimed timber and this is what we're going to be using. We've got some 3x2s and 2x4s. These are all reclaimed and we've got some old pieces of pine which are probably off... I don't know, an old table there and an old wardrobe. And let's hope these come up nice. I think they should do. So I'll spend a bit of time cleaning these up and then we can start building the project. Got to be happy with that, guys. Look at that. And glass as well. Reclaim timber. Not a mark on this underneath that pane. It's worth dipping into a bit of a skip now and again. Just make sure you always ask. Right, now that might be a bit of a different story, but let's have a go at that now. This is going to be the bottom, and I need it to be 300 by 300. It's just inside them holes. So if I cut it literally there and there, I might be able to get rid of that, and then I've got enough there of clean timber for what I need. One thing about using reclaimed timber, I thought I'd check this piece, but look, some horrible little pins in here. You literally do not want one of these horrible little things going straight through one of your nice blades. Now for the tabletop. I'm using this piece which looks like it used to be a tabletop. There's quite a lot of wobble in it as you can see. Uh, it's a bit cooked, but when we cut it through the table saw and then cut it out of the mitre saw and then run it through the thickness there, we should be able to get rid of 90% of that. First thing I need to do is cut the ends off where the warp comes up the most and then that will reduce the size of the table down massively and get rid of most of that cupping. Just a quick one for you guys, when I'm taking cupping out of a board, if there's any cupping whatsoever when I'm doing it on the table side, the cupping going downwards. So it's like this. That way, it's nice and stable on the platform, on the table saw bed, and as it comes off on the outfeed table, it's nice and stable, there's no wobbling around, risk of pinching the blade. When I do it on the mitre saw, I have the cupping going upwards. Now, it's a little bit more wobbly, but what I suggest is clamping it down, and then when you cut through with the blade, the wood drops away from the blade and doesn't pinch it again, reducing any kickback. So that's how I do it, my personal method. I've just realised to get the table top to the thickness that I want, I've had to cut it in half so it'll fit through the thickness there. So I'll get these through the thickness and out and then I'll get back to you. The table top needs gluing back together now so I'll plane it square by hand. So I'll get a nice glue joint. Whoa. 
why is the clamp always one centimetre too small? I'm going to cut all my blocks now and I'm not sure really how many I need but I'm just going to cut away until I've got a stack about 600 mil then I might have a little game of Jenga. Three twenty mil, keep going. It's gotta be close now, aren't we? Five hundred and sixty-five. So I think that'll do. Well, by the time I've got the bottom on the top on and maybe some tiny little feet, that'll be the right size. All you have to do is match opposite corners up, corner to the corner, like so. Then I'm just doing a little pencil line either side. So I've got a reference point and then I'm adding glue. The wood glue combined with some super glue, some activator, back in between the lines, and there you go. On to the last two now guys, it's not that time consuming, it's probably took me about 20 minutes, so not too bad at all. And they the seem pretty solid, I'm getting to use all my leftover super glues from the activators, so that's good. And spiral wise, I've probably got about two turns here, but I just think it depends on the thickness of your material, for how many spirals you're going to get, and obviously the overall height. But there's no hard and fast rule to it anyway. And just go with the flow and see what you end up with. Here we go. <laughs> I'm now on to cutting my table tops. This is a method that you know I'd recommend new new woodworkers to try out. I'm cutting it on the table saw. If you are new, you might want to do this using a jigsaw or some other method, maybe a router, but even a router has its dangers. You need to be you need to be sure that you're competent and that you're at the standard to be able to do a cut like this. I'm gonna do this method, you decide how you want to cut your circle and do that the safest method that you can your way. I do have a video on building this simple jig and I'll put in that description below so if you want to build it you can do. Like everything your safety is your number one priority like mine is mine. A thick circle. The next thing I'm going to do is just char the ends and I just want a little bit of the grain taking the heat so it looks pretty cool as you can see the stripes go through the timber there, you see it, this isn't for everybody but I really like it. I assembled the table down there on the floor, put it next to a chair and I thought it was a little bit too high so I actually knocked two of the blocks off. And I also decided that the table top was a little bit on the small side at 400 millimeters in diameter. So I made a new table top at 600 millimeters in diameter. And then I'm gonna use that secondary table top uh, as the underside now, what I'm gonna attach the Lazy Susan to. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna put a chamfer on this because it's quite thick and chunky. So I'm gonna put a chamfer on the underside, which is gonna make it look a little bit sleeker. This is a chamfer bit. If you haven't seen one before, basically all it is is a 45 degree router bit and it's a bearing guide on the top so it follows the timber. Welcome to the dungeon, aka the woodyard. More burning going on now. And I'm just going to burn around the edge again, just like what we did on the blocks. Just really black out the edge and then a tiny little bit going into the grain. But we really want a deep char on the edge. It's going to give us some really nice contrast. For the finish on the base we're going to use some clear gloss lacquer and this is going to leave a really nice protective coating, nice high sheen finish if you're looking for some modern 
and also a wipe really well and all these charred areas will be sealed in really nicely. I'm now attaching the Lazy Susan, so I'm just going to mark the holes out where they are. And I knew where the centre was because I've got this little hole here where we made the circle and then I've eyeballed it and then I've just checked it with a tape measure and I've got 60 millimetres from each side to the ends there. I'm now pre-drilling where the screws are going to go. And I've just put my drill bit all the way in so it's not going to go all the way through this timber. And then I'm going to route out a couple of mil here just to inset this slightly so it's not the gap in between the two boards isn't as big. I'm now going to mark where the screws are going to go for the top piece and then what I'll do is I'll use a force bit to drill this out, out and I can use that as an access point to screw the top down onto the Lazy Susan as you rotate it around like this. I'm going to attach Lazy Susan now, check everything's working properly and then I'll detach it and add the finish to the top and the base. And now applying the stain and it's a Morals alcohol based stain and this stuff is, well it's, it's the bee's knees, uh, you don't get any blotching or anything like that as long as you apply it correctly. Get a rag, drench the rag and then swamp your timber in, in the stain and then just remove the excess. Apply as many coats as you need to get it as dark as you want but I find it works absolutely great. It's alcohol based so it is Got some chemicals in there it's quite a strong smell you might want to wear a respirator definitely open the doors and windows but this is how i do it get it nice and wet and this is the top i've already done the underside and i'm going to apply probably three coats of this and straight away i can see there's no blotchiness looks lovely just drenched it the, the bent edges look absolutely mint, you'll see later on, we'll get some close-ups. With the walnut soaked into the black, it just looks great. As it soaks in, I'll just apply some more. Definitely don't be stingy with the stain, just keep applying. And then for the final coat, we're going to add a nice Fiddy's Cherry Wax, and that's just it complements the walnut beautifully. A couple of little tips for you guys about when you're applying this fiddies wax. Well, first of all, I keep my brushes in one of these, it's a caddy what you have in your kitchen really for your food waste. But you can shut it, seal the brushes in there with some turpentine, white spirits, and that keeps them nice and moist and stops them from getting ruined basically. And then what you do is, you get that brush out of there, work it into your fiddies wax. Brush it on a section. Table this size, I'll probably do half of it. And then rub the excess off and then rub it into the grain. If you put too much on and leave it and it starts to dry, that's when it starts to go patchy and claggy and it's really difficult to remove the excess. So as you can see that's worked over to about three quarters of the table so I need to add a little bit more. What we'll do then is we'll leave it for about 15 minutes to start to cure and then we get a clean rag and buff it off. And just one coat is all we need of this. Wax offers quite good protection but it's not in the league of a polyurethane or anything like that. But I like it, I just like it and it's if you do scratch it or anything like that, it's really easy to repair. You just apply a little bit more wax and buff it in. I'll get plenty on the edges as well. I'll buff it off and then I'll assemble. Final assemble is pretty easy. I've used a combination square to centralise the frame. And then I used a countersink bit. And 
then just drive the appropriate size screw in. Really happy all that turned out today then guys. Uh, there's not much I'd do differently to be honest today. I mean, oh, I did change the build as and when I was building it. I removed a couple of the blocks. I added the Lazy Susan, which one in the initial plan. But the table itself, I'm really happy how it turned out considering that's reclaimed timber and you know, it's, it's only cheap pine. So there's, there's no extravagant about it, but it's turned out really nice. The good thing about this table, I think is it's, it's versatility. You could, you could change the design no end. You could make this full size dining table size. You could make it real small, low down table. You could make these blocks thinner, longer, all, all sorts, chunkier, what, whatever, you, whatever you feel that would suit your environment. And I think the way this has turned out accidentally on purpose, shall we say, it's great. I think height for playing board games, sat on the sofa, and you can just swivel it around like this to have your next go, which I think I'll be using this tonight to play with my daughter. Uh, so that's it guys, uh, thanks a lot for watching. If you're a regular viewer of the channel and you'd like to support the channel financially, you can do that through PayPal, Patreon and channel membership. I always put your name in the credits after the video as a massive thank you. Cheers guys, and I'll see you on the next one.